Hey guys, now I'll be showing you guys how to do what we just did inside a little, a little preview, right? So we're gonna have some, we're gonna have four little things down so we can still be, we'll be showing inside a video so you show like when it hits this, it ch the material changes. Uh, what we're gonna have, we're gonna have a pillar and I'm gonna move this pillar inside a workspace so I can show you. And this is the pillar we're gonna be using for our little move so we can, our little vibber so we can hit the player and make sure that the, whatever you want the size to be, is gonna be we're gonna place inside a script so you see like if you want it to be a little bit shorter you would change the second value that'll be the y to like 10 but we're putting at 11 because i feel like that's a, a good enough size for a pillar and we're gonna move this, we're gonna move this back up to storage and what we want to do next is that we want to get an event and this event is gonna it's gonna uh fire to the server so everybody else can see our little snap vibris and uh it, and they can take damage and etc right and we're gonna have this re this e remote event and after we get this remote event right we want to get a local script and inside this local script, we want to place it inside of starter character scripts. So this is super important because we want to make sure that we can start our keybind, right? So I named it keybind so I could so you guys know what's about to happen. So first we get the service replicated storage and we also get the service user input service, right? Inside of this, we, we uh fire, we tie uh input began to a function, and then we run input and is typing inside of parameters, right? And then we do if is typing the return end. Basically, when we do is if typing the return n, what we're doing right now is that all we're doing is that we're basically we're basically just saying if the player is typing and they say be quiet in the chat, it's not gonna fire the move and and like they can type Q in the chat without like the move firing, right? And then we just use this line if input.kiko equals equals nm.kiko.q. We're basically just making our little key bond. So like when they hit the Q key, then we're gonna fire our, our remote event. So this remote event's gonna fire server, so everybody else in the game can see the little pillars and see like the players taking damage and etc. And it, so it doesn't only show on the client side. So then next, you wanna enter a script into server script service, and this is gonna be. I, I'll make sure I make this as simple as I can for you guys. This, get, this can get a little bit confusing sometimes, but I'll make sure I make it as simple as I can, right? So the first thing we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna get replicated storage again, and then we're gonna make. We're gonna make two uh, variables, and we're gonna make our first variable called delays, and we're gonna make our our y size equals 11, right? And we made our y size 11 because our y size for our pillar is 11, right? So if you change the size of the second value in size to like 10, you would change this to 10, so the script would run properly, right? And now all we're doing here, we're just we're just optimizing the script, so we're just making sure if like if. If it's the player, if it's the character, we're gonna uh, if uh, character that primary part then return n. So if it doesn't find a human or root part, uh, then it's not gonna fire. So we're just making sure that our actual player is using it right. And if the if the uh, if the script finds a player inside the table, then it's gonna return end. And then we add a player in the table right. And then this is where we do our little animation here. So instead of us just like adding animation inside of case storage and then locating it, we're gonna be making the animation inside of the script so it can, we can save time. And it can make your game look more optimized and more like not a lot of stuff inside the explorer tab right so we're gonna uh we're gonna do local animation equals instance on new that animation we're gonna set the animation id to our little animation id right you can either just put in numbers or you can do rbx asset id and then you can put your semicolon slash slash and the id that you're using for the animation then close it off and now we're gonna do character.humanoid load animation because we, uh, we can only use load animation once we get the humanoid. So load animation, animation that would be right here with this asset ID. Then we're gonna play it right, and then we're gonna wait one divided by six. So we're, we, you can just do wait one or just do wait, but I just did wait one divided by six because I just want to be fancy with it. So after all that, right now we're gonna do now we're gonna loop through. Now we're gonna loop eight times, right? And we're looping eight times because we want eight pillars to come up from the ground. Uh, whatever you change this to is uh, how many times it's gonna uh, come up, right? So we're just gonna do it eight times because I think that's how that's how the original move works. So now we're gonna make our local variable equal to raycast r. So this is where we're gonna start our little raycast at, right? And now we're gonna use a local function and we're gonna call it check. And we're gonna uh, and we're gonna uh, put param and exclude inside of here. And we're gonna use param so we can uh, so we can put our little our blacklist inside of here. So it's gonna be a little blacklist, and we're gonna be using this for our um, what we're gonna exclude. So like the table, oh uh, like uh, we don't want it to hit us. So we're gonna put our our character inside of here. So now we did if i percent two equals equals zero. Then so basically this right here is basically saying we're gonna find all the even numbers when it's looping through when it's looping through eight times so for example when it loops one time 
it since this is not equal to so since this is not equal to uh is it this is not an even number it's gonna fire this right here because we have an else statement and if it is an even number, it's going to fire this. So it's going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, so we can position these pillars um, from like different sides, right? So now we've made raycast R equal to workspace, semicolons raycast, right? And now this is where the confusing part might come into everybody else, right? So what we're doing here, we're doing character.primaryPart.cframe time cframe.new. And then all we're doing here, it, we're just positioning we're just positioning the C frame, right? No, we're C framing it and then we're positioning it, right? Because in the first parameter in ray casting is going to be, you're going to have to position the ray and then the next parameter is making the ray. And then the next parameter is the little blacklist and whitelist, right? Is what most people would actually do, right? So what we're going to do here, we're, doing, we're getting the character dot human root part, basically the human root parts, so not to confuse you, dot C frame times C frame dot new. And now we put three in our X so think of your so think of your character like think of your character right here right and if we're moving on the x-axis we're moving like straight across from here so that means three would be like around right here so three from our character and our character is right here and now we're putting zero because we don't want it to go up at all because we want to we want it to stay on the ground and we're doing negative i times 3.6 so this you can just you can mess around with this to test how you want it to go like but this is uh since it's on a z axis this is how uh, far it's going to go in front of us right and we put negative i because i is always going to be changing we want i to keep changing so the pillars can keep going in front of the other pillars we don't want the pillars just to spawn in front of each other and then like uh it's not it's not really a big increase of space in front of them we wanted to have like a a big amount of space in front of them right and th this is where we basically make our right so we're gonna make our ray go downwards. So if um, so we're gonna make a ray for every pillar we make. It's gonna have a ray, uh, to the y axis that's gonna be negative 80 down. So think of uh, so if this block right here is in the sky, and we make a ray, so it would have to go down. So we made a ray. This block would automatically stop right here on the base plate, right? Because it found a part, it found an instance that it was gonna stop at. And then what we do here, we put in the parameters, right? And this is what we're gonna do in the in the end. And then we put else, and then we're gonna do then we're gonna do the same thing basically here. And this is where we kind of change it up a little bit. Because yeah, what we change it, we put uh negative three, so it's gonna go on the other side of our character. And then we'll, and then we're gonna go into more of the easier stuff that you guys should understand pretty easily, right? Now we're gonna make our local variable called insta equals raycast our instance. And uh so basically we're gonna find the instance of whatever the ray finds. And if the uh, insta, if insta dot parent or insta dot parent find for child humanoid, then table, then the table is going to insert the basically the character right. It's going to insert the character inside the exclude table, and then param basically our parameters dot filter descendant equals ex exclude. So our exclude is our little table that we just added. So we, since we add the character inside of the table, it's going to be exclude. So it's basically put our character inside this table. Then we're going to fire. Then we're going to uh, uh, fire check params and exclude. That's all we did there, right? And now this is where we're actually gonna start making. This is where we're actually gonna start the blacklisting, right? So then we made raycast uh, pa, and then we uh, just did raycast params dot new, and then we did raycast pa dot filter type equals enum dot raycast filter type dot blacklist because we want to blacklist ourselves, and then we run. We basically run uh, the function again, but instead we use uh, we uh, we put for the first value. We're gonna put a param that's gonna be our blacklist, and we're gonna put a table that's gonna be an empty table because we already made the our first table up in here. That would be the player character, right? So now we're getting close to the uh, end of the script here, right? So now we did if rake so if rake cast r, so if it finds something in the array, then we're gonna make our table called hits, and then we're gonna make local pillar equal to replicate storage dot pillar dot and then clone it, right? Because we wanna we wanna have more than one pillar. We don't want to keep using the same pillar over and over again, right? That's not gonna be optimized. And then we're gonna change the um then we're gonna change the material to whatever the raised material is. So if so for example in the uh in the little preview, uh if this material is neon, then the uh then the material of the pillar is gonna be neon. If this is like cobblestone, the material of this is gonna be cobblestone. Since it's slate, this is gonna be slate. If it's plastic, it's gonna be plastic. It should be super simple, it's it's really nice and it will help you game out a lot, right? So now if pillar dot size equals pillar dot size plus vector three dot new, and we're just gonna we're just changing the size a little bit. You can optimize whatever you want. We're just changing the size, and we're pairing the pillar to the workspace so we can 
so everybody can see it and won't be replicated stored still. And now what we're gonna do here, we're just now we're just uh, playing with the um the position a little bit. You could remove this right here if you wanted to, but I just added it here so it can be a little bit more randomized. But all we're doing, we're positioning the the pillar's position to the raised position. So that means that uh, all the pillars would actually go down and it won't just stay in the air if the player's like on like a, a cliff or something, right? And now we're gonna make a delay function, right? So this is basically how we're gonna this basically how we're gonna make our, our, our little pillars how we're gonna make the human take damage, right? So now we're gonna make a delay function and we're gonna put point two function. And now we're gonna do for IV and pairs, pillars get touching parts. So now we're gonna get all the touching parts, right? And do it and if not V. And if not v dot parent, if not v dot parent, find for child humor, then return n. If v is a descendant of character, then return n. So now all we're doing here, we're just optimizing the script. So if it doesn't find, uh, if it doesn't find our uh, humanoid, that's not us. So if it finds a humanoid and it's us, it won't fire. But if it finds a humanoid that's not us, it's going to fire. And then we're gonna do if table dot find hits. So our little hits table up here, uh, v dot parent dot humanoid. So if it already finds a humanoid, then it's gonna return n. So if table dot insert uh, uh, hits v dot parents, so now we're gonna insert the humor that got hit, and now we're gonna make that uh, certain humor like, take damage, right? Now we're gonna do another delay function, and this is where uh, the tweening comes in of how the pillars are going up and down. We're gonna make a delay function. We're gonna make it for 0.8 seconds, right? And now we're gonna do gain. Now we're gonna get, uh, now we're gonna get tween service. We're gonna create it. We're gonna tween the pillars. We're gonna tween it for two seconds. And we're gonna make our table right. We're gonna make position equal to pillar dot position plus vector three dot new. The x the x axis is zero. We're gonna have negative. We're gonna have negative y size. Remember, negative y size is what we put up here. Whatever your y is, it's gonna be whatever our negative y size is gonna be, right? Because we wanted to go back down. And then for our next one, uh, we did negative y dot size. We're gonna do divided by two. And now we're gonna make and now we're gonna make our z axis to zero because we don't want to go in front of us at all or behind us. And now we're gonna change the size to basically do the exact same thing, but we're not dividing it by two because we're trying to make a uh, just because we're changing the size, it's gonna go right right back down. But for this position, just remember whatever your y is is what your uh, is what um, uh, this y size variable is gonna be. And then we're gonna press play. Uh, and then we're gonna go to the delay function, right? So this is uh. Uh, so in this delay function, uh, oh, hold on, let me go back down. So okay, right here, right. So we got game .debris add item pillar one. So basically, we're gonna remove the pillar and then we're gonna add it back after one second, right? Then we're gonna wait 0.1 seconds, right? So this is where the optimization really comes in because you're probably wondering why we have like two things the human will take damage, right? So let's say the pillar is up and like the player doesn't take damage and like the let's say the last pillar comes up and like they wait, like uh, they wait for 0.2 seconds and this delay function doesn't find them this dot touch function will help us will help us let them take damage if they get hit by it right so if hit and so basically we're just going to optimize it the same that we did here so i'm not going to explain that part right so basically if we find a humanoid and if we already found a human in here then they're not going to take damage right because then we did return and so it's going to stop the script there but if we find the uh humanoid in here we're going to put the humanoid inside a hitch table and we're going to make them take 10 damage and we're gonna end it off right here and we're gonna do wait two because you wanna because you don't want the script to go like extremely quick. We wanna give this time so we wanna give the script some time to wait. And now we're gonna do animation destroy. So now we're gonna destroy our animation because we we want this animation to um we want this animation to um occur like when we're done. We don't want this animation to stay, right? And then we're gonna remove weights, table find weights player. So if we find if we find a uh, weights and there's a player inside a table we're going to remove that we're going to move that player from the weights table and that's basically how you make your snap fibrous um if there's any more questions about uh how you want to get this done if you have any concern be able to join my discord uh down below i would love to answer any of your questions uh make sure you like subscribe and thank you